So good morning, everybody. Great to have you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, wishing you mainly health and happiness in this uh, 2022 year. That's what we need, right? So. Absolutely. Yes, health especially. We thank you so much for your time and, you know, for agreeing to see us. We're very excited to speak to you this morning. It's my pleasure and uh, I'm very excited to speak to you and uh, the, near, the new year's off to a good start. And uh, we have a health crisis all over the world. So I think it's uh, the timing's right for us to discuss a few things in the health uh, industry and in the health sector. So looking forward to our chat this morning. Absolutely. So first of all, let's talk about the staffing crisis right away. We would like to hear your thoughts. You know, this is something that was going on way before the pandemic, because a lot of people forget that this was going on before. Hospitals were understaffed before the pandemic exploded. So, you know, as a parliamentarian, what are your thoughts? I recognize there is a staffing crisis in the healthcare sector, but I also want to underscore the heroes in our healthcare sector that have been doing tremendous work throughout the pandemic. I truly believe the pandemic simply magnified what we already knew. Our nurses, our doctors, our PSWs, and the entire healthcare staff have always been knowledgeable, caring, and professional, and have always shown empathy and commitment to their work and patients. So that's not changed. We all knew that, and I thank them for it. We've all seen the value of their work and um, we can't say enough thank you. As you know, health is a provincial jurisdiction uh, here in Canada, and I'm from Quebec, a senator from Quebec, which means that the provincial and territorial governments are responsible for management, organization, and delivery of healthcare services for the residents. The federal government has a major role to play in terms of providing funding to provinces and territories. At the national level, the government has other bureaucratic responsibilities, such as regulating products, such as medical devices, chemical and pharmaceuticals. It also supports health research, promotion and protection, and disease monitoring and prevention. As evidenced by the important role of the federal government playing during the pandemic in approving vaccines, securing them and deploying them across the country, in my opinion, the single most important way the federal government can help provinces address the staffing crisis in the healthcare sector is by providing more funding, which is something all the provinces are calling for. So it's about funding, it's about resources, and uh, we, are, we have all seen the importance of resources in the healthcare sector, and it's providing the adequate resources, getting the right people committed, engaged, on the job. 100 percent. If I can just weigh in there quickly, Laura. Uh, no, I appreciate what you said there because there's no question that whether it's provincial, federally, or even to some degree on a municipal level, you know, every single aspect of government is trying to look after that community that they're in, whether it's the whole country right down to a given city or township. Uh, you know, case in point for us is the fact that you know, we looked at this as an opportunity to try and help healthcare because we realize the same thing that these healthcare heroes are going way and above and beyond what is could possibly be expected. And and therefore it's it's not been easy on them. And uh, you know, I think it's it's wonderful that we would take the opportunity to always acknowledge them and, and everybody doing their part to not only congratulate, recognize, uh, but to do to do what you can to help. That's right. Well said. well said. Definitely. So now that we speak about, you know, the help they need and funding and all these things in you are in Parliament, uh, what can healthcare workers expect to see in this 2022? Is there any, um, I don't know, roads that will be taken this year, something that will happen to benefit these people? As an independent senator with no ties to the government, it's difficult for me to predict what type of legislation the federal government might introduce this year. And unfortunately, I don't have a crystal ball. However, I think we can make some educated guesses what kind of bills 
the government might introduce during this parliament or what funding announcements may be made based on some of their campaign promises from last fall's federal, federal election. The Liberals promised to provide $3.2 billion for the hiring of 7,500 new family doctors, nurses, and nurse practitioners. And as we know, they are well needed. $400 million over four years to build an, on the growing demand for the virtual care that arose during the pandemic. And there too, we've seen that virtual care is becoming more and more of an issue. Offer healthcare professionals who are just starting out in their careers a one-time income tax deduction up to $15,000 over their first three years of practice to help with the costs of setting up a practice. And establish the new Canada Mental Health Transfer to assist provinces in expanding the delivery of high quality, accessible and free mental health services. And last but not least, fully fund a national free digital mental health crises and suicide prevention hotline. The Liberals also made promises during the campaign to address the challenges in long term care facilities in Canada. We've all seen how important that is. And uh, one, the development of a safe long term care act to ensure that seniors are guaranteed the care they deserve, no matter where they live. Raising the wages for personal support workers, PSWs, including a guaranteed minimum minimum wage of at least $25 an hour and training up to 50,000 new personal support workers, PSWs. This is just a sample of some of the promises that the Liberals campaigned and were re-elected on. So it's probable probably safe to say that more money is likely coming to the provinces to address these issues in part and the staffing crisis in the healthcare sector because we do have a staffing crisis uh, as you've seen and as we all know at this point in time and healthcare is so important. I do want to mention one bill that Parliament adopted just before the holidays that included provisions specific to healthcare workers, Bill C3 received royal assent on December 17th and it amended the, the criminal code to create a new intimidation offense to protect healthcare workers and persons seeking health services. The amendment makes it cr a criminal offense for individuals to use fear to stop a healthcare worker or those who assist them from performing their duties or to prevent a person from obtaining health services. So that's an important bill, the Bill C-3 that we've, uh, that Parliament uh, re received the uh, Royal Assent on December 17th. Bill C-3 received Royal Assent on December 17th, amending the criminal code. An important bill. Absolutely. James, yeah. all, I mean, no, because we all heard the horrifying stories in the last yeah. two years, healthcare workers being bullied, threatened and intimidated. Uh, I mean, for one, BC's top doctor, Bonnie Henry, had to have security in her home and had been targeted with death threats, abusive letters and disturbing phone calls to her staff. Like the government, I agree that everyone deserves to feel safe when seeking or providing health services, which is why I voted in favor of the bill. Right. You know, I was thinking, uh, and I also appreciate because let's be honest, uh, that that uh, that latter part there will have an impact on people's mental health, no question. And to see that there's more and more provisions, funding, and programs coming into play for mental health is going to be critical. It, mental health is similar with the whole concept of the healthcare system was so important, as we know, it's the crown jewel of our country. Um, but at the end of the day, the pandemic, all it did is just to it worsened the situation. And and now if we really didn't put any kind of things in place for this, the mental health crisis that we'll have will be beyond a scale that we can even fathom, let alone measure. And and I think it's really it's really important. It's great to hear this because, you know, it's uh, it, it shows some foresight on behalf of the government to to take this into account and say, OK, what are we going to do to help mitigate, if not hopefully abate these problems? So uh, that's wonderful. I know from our perspective as a, a team that got together and came with a varied history, you know, we just took a fresh approach to healthcare and, and 
cognizant of the fact that here's something that's truly beautiful that we all treasure, that we all appreciate in our country. So what can we do to help make that better? And, and at the end of the day, for up and coming, whether it's grads or, you know, or they're somewhere in that healthcare journey when it's moving from one career to the next or a nursing position to this or, or whatever that might be, or even immigrants as well. Uh, you know, our point of view on this with caring support was saying, what if it was a platform that really allowed the candidate to shine and give them an opportunity to put themselves in a position where, you know, they're the the superstar, the rock star, really. So, you know, our approach is a little bit different. We're trying to take a fresh new look to this and, and keep in mind that because of the current situation. So I really appreciate what you're saying because the mental health thing is, is certainly very important to me. I have known many people that have, have gone through such a, um, a tough time with this pandemic alone, little, you know, notwithstanding anything prior to that. So thank you for saying that.